Hello and welcome to the next video in the series. In this video we're going to learn about something called includes. Now in the fifth video of this series we learned about procedures and includes are kind of like an addition uh, to the procedures, an additional lesson to the procedures. So if you haven't learned about includes definitely check out that video. You will need that information for uh, this video. Now in, to review in the last video we learned that procedures are kind of like uh, miniature commands, uh, your own commands that you can write and then use in the script in the main loop to um, to do whatever the the procedure does. So, for example, in ours, let's clear and run it. In our uh, program, it's called Program Includes, and there's one procedure. The pro procedure name is say name. It's like the command name, and uh, it has its own begin end with a semicolon. Remember, the semicolon, not dot. Dot is for the main loop. And in the in the procedure we give it commands. In this case we only have one command that says write line, my name is Jack. So write my name is Jack to the bottom part of the screen. Now in the main loop we actually tell SCAR to execute this command, to do whatever the command says. So when SCAR gets here to the begin and it sees say name, it goes all the way back here to say name and does whatever say name does. So write line, my name is Jack. And then it ends the script with, with number of the dot. Very important. Now includes is in addition to this because it allows you to import another file with a bunch of includes in it so that you can use the procedures or your commands or later we'll learn about more advanced commands or more advanced procedures and functions and it allows you to import them to use them in this script without writing them there just by telling SCAR where the file with all the procedures is. We have to create two files. The first file, let's let's save this file as a script. Let's rename it the script. All right, let's save it as the script. So here, uh, I just created a temporary directory. You know, you can have your own, but place them in the same folder. So the script. All right, see it's in the includes example folder. So the script. Let's save it. Now we need a new file to to. Uh, contain all of our other procedures that we want to include. So to create a new file, um, hold control, press T, that'll create a new uh, tab with a new script. And for um, procedures, you have to delete the program new. Well, actually, you have to delete, delete the whole thing, but the program new will tell SCAR that it's a script. And um, this isn't a script, this is just a bunch of commands put together. So delete program new, and also delete the main loop, because this isn't a script. We're not going to execute anything. We're just going to have a bunch of commands in it. So let's uh, write the, a few procedures. Let's do. Let's create two procedures. First procedure, and it's the same format. Procedure name. So let's say uh, includes procedure one, and in this one we'll say this is procedure one in the include. All right. Now, let's create a different procedure. Wait on me. Let's just do wait on me. And let's make it wait a thousand seconds. And then we'll say we waited a thousand seconds. Well, milliseconds. A thousand, a thousand milliseconds is one second. So let's do that and let's end it. All right. Now that we have this, we save this file as whatever we want. In this case, let's save it as the includes. That's what's going to be its name. So remember the name and the includes. That's what it's going to be saved as. Now, what you do is we go to the top of the script, and right after program name, we um, we use this these symbols. So first, do open bracket dot includes, and then write the name of the file. So the name of the file would be dot includes. All right, so this means that that whatever is in this file now becomes available in this script. So let's save it. Now we can use um, the procedures from this file. So it includes procedure one and uh, wait on me. The, these two procedures we can use them in this script. So let's do that. Let's first let's use includes procedure one. Let's see if it works. Save it and run. Nope. So let's see what the problem is. All right. 
Oh, I guess I forgot. It should be include, not includes. So let's save, run. All right. So here it is. So let's see what it does. So this, this, the um, scar starts right here. Program script name. Then it, it sees this this uh, open break open brace dot include so it expects some kind of file name here it sees the includes so it checks from wherever this script is from this folder it checks for this file in the same folder so it sees this file this file and it goes through all these procedures so when it sees this it goes into the script and checks this script for errors and, and records the procedures that it has so it goes into the script and it sees procedure includes procedure one and then it sees what this one does records what it does so this is a procedure one and include and then it sees procedure the second one wait on me and it, it sees if there are any errors here wait a thousand right lines so this is all good it remembers these names then it goes back here and it, and it continues to read so it reads procedure name remembers this name you see there's no, no uh, errors here no problems and then it finally gets to the main loop to begin where it actually does things and it sees same name. So when it sees same name, first it checks its own commands, and since same name isn't one of its own commands, it goes back here and it sees same name is right here. So it does whatever same name is. In this case, it does right line, writes whatever this says. My name is Jack, in the bottom part of the screen. All right. Then it goes on to the next command. The next command is includes procedure one. So since this is already included in the script because of this line. It goes back here to this script and it looks for includes procedure one. It finds this, and then it goes through this file and looking for, um, looking for what it does. So in this case, it right line. This is a procedure one, so it ends here and it's done. All right. And we can also use the other command. We can even use it inside of another another procedure. So for example, what's the wait on me? So let's do wait on me right here. Okay. Now let's run it and see what happens. Let's clear it first. Oops. Alright, run it. My name is Jack. It waited one second. Then it says we waited one second. Then it says this is a procedure procedure one in the include. Alright, so what does it do? Same thing, it goes through the script compiling, checking for errors. You know, program name includes, goes into this file, checks for errors, and records the procedure names. Then it sees this procedure, goes in through it and checks for errors. Uh, remembers the name and then it finally gets to begin the main loop and it does say name so it goes back here and does whatever say name does in this case it right line this my name is Jack then it sees wait on me and it goes back to the script and looks for wait on me and then does whatever wait on me does right line waits a thousand milliseconds and writes this and then it goes on and does includes procedure one which is this procedure so then it right lines this so it's pretty simple and you can actually have more than one include all you have to do is just create another one uh, dot include uh, you know I don't know if you create another file somewhere include dot scar and same thing and this this will also be included so however many you want to do you can add them like this now why do I only put the includes dot scar here instead of the whole you know um, location of it. Well, SCAR has two ways, two places where it automatically checks for the file if you don't give it a whole path. So if it sees the includes that SCAR, there are two places it checks. First, it checks wherever this script is saved. So um, in this case, this script is saved in this file. So so it checks this directory first. It goes to C program, fi program files, SCAR 3.22 scripts includes example and it checks for the includes in this um, this directory if it doesn't find it there then there's another directory it checks for scar has um, a folder right here called includes and inside this folder it also checks for them so if if your uh, script is somewhere in a folder let's say I create a folder here and then includes and call it my include and then I go in here and I create um, so let's let's do that. Let's um, let's copy the old one, the old include that we just made into that directory. So the includes. Let's copy this file. Oops. Scar 3.22 includes. 
let's go into my include and paste it in here. Now, since since uh, scar looks from from includes, we have to tell it that it's in this folder because it already already knows this part. We have to tell it this part. So we go back to our script and we say the includes my includes slash the includes as scar. So let's see if this works. See, same thing because this points to this location includes or whatever and if you wanted to um, give it the whole path if you you know didn't put it in one of those folders you can also do just give it the whole path so in this example it would be this so C program files and it goes from the root all the way to wherever it is now the good thing about um, not using this you really shouldn't use the C the whole path because um, if you if you want other people to use a script you don't know where exactly they will save it so you know they might save it in this location but they also might not have this part right here and then you know your script won't compile because star won't be able to find the file so the best thing to do is to um, either have it in the same location as the script or to have it in the includes folder of scar and then you can just use its name or you know slash wherever it is from that location. So that's, that's pretty much it for includes. And you probably won't use this yourself because there are big libraries for uh, RuneScape like SRL that you're probably going to use instead. But it's good to know um, in case you do want to use it or even if you just want to know how um, SRL works, what it means when you see this thing right here. And finally, in the last video, I actually said that anything that's green is ignored by SCAR. Well, I guess that was a bit of a lie. Uh, there are a few things that SCAR sees uh, if they're green, but they're pretty rare. And this is the one that you're probably going to only see ever. So just know that if there's no um, if there's if it, there's no dot includes after the open bracket, then it's probably just a com just a comment. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.